In this episode, we're going to go over more weird, rare, and awesome G.I. Joe products from the 1980s. So, stick around. Hello friends and welcome to Days of Dorker Past. My name's Rob and don't adjust your TVs. My shirt is this garishly horrible in real life. And I love it. I mean look, it's like reflecting light. It's so crazy. It's so awesome. Anyway, welcome to another installment of Weird, Rare, and Awesome. This time, we're talking about more G.I. Joe products from the 1980s. I have to add, I have a shirt that's assaulting your vision, but I apologize if your sound is also being assaulted. At the moment, I'm having to multitask, and I'm doing laundry, this is a laundry room after all, while I film. Unfortunately, I'm in the middle of some crunch time, and this just has to be the way. So I apologize if it sounds like gravel is being thrown at the camera. It's not. It's just washer and dryer. And if you're new around here, this isn't some shtick of, Hey, I gotta do laundry because I'm in a laundry room. No. I'm just rushed for time. Anyway, when you have a super hot, popular product like G.I. Joe that was winning on all fronts. It had a super popular toy line, a super popular cartoon, and a super popular comic book. There's no other thing to do than send your marketing goons out there to sell whatever licenses they can get. Because nothing says true success like a puzzle, a coloring book, or, well, let's let this list do the talking. Number one on the list comes from Hallmark from the year 1983, and that is stickers. The last time we looked at G.I. Joe products, there were also stickers, because stickers were all the rage in the 80s. They were magnificent. I did a whole episode on stickers in the 80s, so I'll drop that in the comments if you're interested. Anyway... Hallmark was the king of stickers, in my opinion. They had some of the most awesome designs and artwork that were out there. One of the benchmarks, in my opinion, were their Gremlin stickers. Unfortunately, they didn't hit that kind of benchmark with these G.I. Joe stickers. Granted, it was very early in G.I. Joe's history. Well, the G.I. Joe that we all know and love from the 80s. They released them with three different colors as a background. Blue, gray, and white. I might be mistaken about that with some of the pictures I've seen that maybe the white had turned to gray or vice versa. Either way, they released a couple different versions of the same sheet. You have some great characters here. You have Gung Ho. You have Doc. You have Torpedo. And you have... Airborne? Well, he's a little miscolored, and he kind of is reminiscent more of Ripcord with his camo, but this is where it really goes off the rails. Yes, that is Snake Eyes. Not in black, in shades of blue and green. What the heck? It's black! I know there's a four-color process here, but layer all the colors on top of each other and get black, or at least a dark brown. I mean, come on. Anyway, this would still be an awesome thing to have in your collection of G.I. Joe. I mean, it's, it is a time capsule of an awesome time in our lives, in America, in pop culture. I mean, stickers... 
I still get a kick out of stickers. I mean, my kids, stickers are a dime a dozen, but back then, they were something special to be cherished. Now, you could cherish this because it's G.I. Joe, but they really missed the mark with this one. But it's still awesome. Number two on the list comes from 1986, and that is a bathroom kit. Just like in the last episode, talking about the Avon bathroom set, this is an all-new, all-different one. And future lists will have even more. That was one thing. I don't know if a licensing agent was like, hey, boys are dirty. We need cleaning products for them. Their parents will buy them for them to get them to wash behind their ears. I don't know. I could see that going down. But, I mean, I have to be honest. This was a product I actually had. And I was 10 years old at the time. And I was going on my first week-long camping trip with the Boy Scouts. We are going on a dangerous canoe trip down a treacherous river for a week. And my bright idea was, don't buy me one of those official Boy Scout manly bathroom kits. Get me the G.I. Joe kit. It's got everything you need. Some bandages, a toothbrush, a comb, a brush, a little thing of soap in a little container. It had it all. And it had great characters on it. Characters that don't really get that much play, like Repeater or Leatherneck. And it even had the Armadillo on one of them. Each item was emblazoned with the G.I. Joe logo, and that was awesome. Now, the only difference is, if you can see, this toothbrush in its holder is one piece. The one I had came in two pieces. And they each had a piece like this that they would fit together. So it could be stored in a much smaller container, but then transformed into a big functional toothbrush. I can't say how those products lasted on that treacherous trip, but I have the memory of picking them up at the local Caldor, I believe. Yeah, it was Caldor, and just being thinking I was the coolest dude at camp because I had G.I. Joe bathroom kit. Number three on the list comes from 1982 and their puzzles. They were released by APC, American Publishing Company, and they were awesome. This is another product that I had one of. I had this one. As you can see, there were four styles altogether, and they only ran for $1.77 back in the day. What kind of puzzle can you get for $1.77 now? I mean, you can get some from the dollar store that are like 25 pieces, but these were real, authentic puzzles. And what was great about them was the artwork. In the infancy stages of G.I. Joe, we didn't have much to go on, but great pictures like this. Great artwork. This is what fueled our imagination and gave these characters more life. We see them in action. We see them doing awesome things. Because this is before the cartoon was released. The comic was just getting off the ground. But these puzzles, this was where it was at. I wish I could go back in time and grip that puzzle out of my mom's hands before she donated it to the Goodwill. If I still had that puzzle today, it would be put together, put that glue shellac stuff on it, and hanging in a frame. Because they're beautiful. It's great artwork, great colors. They just pop visually and in your imagination. They were awesome. Number four is yet another product that I have. I'm quite shocked this list is made up of a lot that I actually have. And believe me, there are a lot of lists for G.I. Joe products that I have yet to do, and I ain't got nothing on those lists. But anyway, this was the Colorform set. Released by Colorforms in 1983, the only thing that was a downer about this is the lack of color. Colorform adhered to the four-color style, and sometimes it hit, sometimes it didn't. 
the closest they could get for Snake Eyes was blue, but that was okay. We kind of saw him in that blue motif in other places. Now, the puzzles that I just talked about had him in black. Because puzzles, printed material like that, you had more control and more leeway to do a bigger palette of colors. But for color forms, they were hampered by their lack of colors. This was something I remember picking up from the Dollar General store in a town outside of the one I grew up in. And I think at the same time, or close to it, probably beforehand, I got a Mork and Mindy color form set. Color forms were all-encompassing. Everything made its way into color form. Now, let's take a look at this set. It has a great background. It has all the core characters right there. But there's one thing missing. There's no Cobra. Sorry, I take that back. You may not have had a Cobra, but you had this. And what the heck is this? Is this a monkey? A dog? I can't tell in the picture. I'd like to imagine it's a prototype version of Timber, that it's a dog that can hang out with snake eyes. But who knows? Number five on the list is something I didn't even know existed, and I'm kind of ticked off about that, and that is die-cast vehicles. Released in 1983 by Aviva, these die-cast vehicles are perfection. From what I can tell, these were sold in different styles. You could get a single vehicle, you could get a three-pack, or you could get all six of them in one monster awesome pack. Like I said, I didn't even know these existed when I was a kid. But you have all the, all the first vehicles that were in the line. You had the Mobat, the Ram, the Vamp, and all the various cannons and missiles. Awesome. Like I said, these are the epitome of perfection. You had great detail, great colors, and... I'm only assuming they probably sell for a pretty penny nowadays. Oh, I'd love to get these in my collection nowadays, but I run the risk of my son thinking they're just like his normal Hot Wheels and crashing the crap out of them. Anyway, number six on the list. There we go. Number six is... An AM radio. That's right, AM. You too, with G.I. Joe's help, can listen to talk radio and oldie stations. Forget that fancy FM stuff. G.I. Joe don't rock and roll. Wait a minute, one of them was named rock and roll. I couldn't find any information on who made these AM radios, but they came in a variety of different packaging. I don't know if that's because they've tried to roll it out year after year after year, or that was just something that they did to appeal to different uh, stores. I thought I got a lead because on these packages it says Solid State. I thought maybe that was the name of the manufacturer, but what Solid State is means a radio that doesn't have tubes. How wild is that? That in 1982, you needed to advertise that your radio didn't have tubes. That is crazy. I mean, tube radios were probably what I know my grandparents listened to when there was no TV, when they would have to all hunker around the huge radio in their living room and listen to stories told to you. There was no moving pictures in your home. There was only a radio. And that blows my mind that this has to advertise that it's not one of those types. Anyway, like I said, they came in many different packaging. You had one with grunt on it. You had one that had a window. You had one that was just a very nondescript G.I. Joe box. And there were two different kinds that were made. You had this awesome radio that Ralphie Parker would love because it has a compass. And he wanted a compass on the stock and a thing that told time. And how great is that? If you're out in the wild listening to your prairie home companion, 
radio show on AM and you get lost, you can find your way home. But anyway, the other one has such daring features as a belt clip and headphones. And these were the type of headphones that were sold with your run-of-the-mill Walkman back in the day. Anyway, I don't remember ever really seeing these in the wild. I may have at Radio Shack or something and don't remember. But this would be a pretty neat thing to have on your shelf, especially the big one with the compass on it. Number seven on the list is the infamous Paint the Figure line by Hasbro. These were released in 1984 alongside the D&D ones that they released of War Duke and Strongheart. And Mr. T and that stupid dog from the cartoon. There were only two offered in this line, but there were others made by other companies that we'll get to at another day. But these two were Duke and Zartan. While looking for pictures to jog my memory and to edit into this episode, I stumbled upon one mint on card for sale on eBay, and it was fetching $100. I'm sure by now the paint is dried up, but with this more intricate paint-by-numbers design, you could use any color you want. Like a lot of the things on these lists, man, these would look awesome on a shelf, painted up and looking pretty. Number eight comes from 1985, and it's from a company called Spectra Star. And these are G.I. Joe Wind Socks. When the fast-paced world of kite flying has left you tired and exasperated, get a wind sock. These things, just look at the packaging. It could be put on your bike, used as a decoration, or as a kite tail. That'd be pretty cool. A G.I. Joe kite with a G.I. Joe wind sock attached. Very cool. Now, with my little bit of research to look into this, I've only found one G.I. Joe wind sock, and that is Flint. I mean, there's no better character to have on a wind sock. It looks like he's punching somebody. So, take a nice, calm thing, such as a wind sock, and put somebody knocking somebody's block off on it. Number nine on the list comes from 1985 and was produced by Milton Bradley. This is the Commando Attack Game. This game is infamous, at least to me, for having such awesome cardboard playing pieces. You had some of the most popular characters at the time. Footloose, Quick Kick, the Crimson Twins. I mean, it's awesome. Pair that with little tents and buildings that you can build out of cardboard, and you got one heck of a game. Now, I cannot comment on how the game was played, if it was fun, if it was something the whole family gathered around the kitchen table to enjoy, but all I can go by is how badly I wanted it and how great it looks. There was a G.I. Joe mobile game that came out maybe five, six years ago that reminded me so much of this. You had cards, but you moved your little players around the field, and it reminded me of this game so much, because they look like little cutouts going around, just like this game. Like I said, I can't comment on how the game was played, if it was fun. All I can comment on is how badly I wanted it, how great this looks, and those little cardboard things, in my mind, would fill in the holes in my G.I. Joe collection. I wouldn't mind playing with one of the, the little cardboard things with my figures. I think that would be totally awesome. On the first list of G.I. Joe products that I released a few months ago, I'll add that in the description as well, I talked about a camouflage tent that was made. A lot of people commented on this tent, which I always had plans of adding to this list. So it was coming, everybody, but thanks for the suggestions. And that is the APC tent. Released by Eero or ERO in 1985, this play tent is awesome. This is something I didn't know existed. I'm sure I saw it like in the Montgomery Ward's Christmas catalog, but I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I never saw it out in the wild. I never knew anyone that had it, but if I did know somebody that had it, I probably would have stole it. This tent was a pretty great recreation of the infamous APC 
vehicle from the G.I. Joe toys. One that I personally had and loved. Granted, when I had it, I didn't have enough figures to fill all the seats, but I love this thing. Great vehicle. Would love to get one again. But we're talking about the tent here. The tent is a more squatter version of it, but here, look at this picture. Look how much fun these kids are having. On top of it, you have an inflatable cannon. I mean, mind-blowing. That is awesome. That, that takes a special somebody to design that. I mean, how great is it to pretend that you're riding around in the APC, blasting Cobra, and then when you're tired, you just go to sleep? That sounds like a win-win, no matter how you cut it. Anyway, this has been another list of weird, rare, and awesome G.I. Joe products from the 1980s. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I have to apologize again if the laundry, if the sound was just, if it ruins this episode. I hope not, because I had a lot of fun talking about these items and reminiscing about the ones that I have and fantasizing about the ones that I didn't have. Anyway, like I said, I hope you liked this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this episode or any of the ones that I recommended or the ones that YouTube's recommending down below, hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you will be notified whenever there's a new episode. So, until next time, yo Joe, and keep being rad and stay dorky.